I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining us here today. This is the 27th anniversary celebration of the Christopher Columbus Monument here in Norristown. And we're going to get underway. Uh, beginning with the posting of the colors, we have the Montgomery County Sheriff's Department color guard with Joseph C. Tonko and Richard Wyda from the Knights of Columbus Assembly number 934. Now, if everyone will still uh, remain standing and join us as the fifth grade class from St. Francis of Assisi leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. standing as we have Bianca Mezzaranca from uh, courtesy of Chow Bella is going to perform the national anthem of the United States and Italy. Yeah. 
Now I would ask uh, Monsignor San Germano, the Holy Savior Parish, to come forward for the invocation. I know that we remember in our prayer today, as always, our dear Hank Sisko, who certainly is a presence here, whether we see him physically or not. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we honor the memory of the great Admiral of the Ocean Sea, Christopher Columbus, Teach us also to imitate his virtues, his faith, which impelled him to put all his undertakings under your protection, his courage, which caused him to face adversity and the unknown with a firm sense of purpose, and his humility, which enabled him to face the misunderstandings that came to him with the peace of mind of a clear conscience. As we honor one to whom we owe so much, fill our hearts with a twofold sense of gratitude and purpose. Gratitude for the courageous explorer whom we honor this day, and gratitude for these great United States, which have always held him in special honor. Purpose also, as we are called in a special way to appreciate this great land in which we live, so that following and imitating the virtues of the great Columbus, we might show ourselves to be worthy not only of the great admiral from Genoa, but also of this great country in which we live. We ask you also to bless this day and all who honor the memory of Christopher Columbus, the admiral of the Ocean Sea. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, you may be seated. Now, um, as Monsignor mentioned, Obviously, this monument and this day would not be possible if not for the efforts of Hank Sisko, who, as we all know, um, is battling an illness and is not able to be with us here today, um, but physically here today. But we're lucky enough to have a message from Hank, which we're going to play now for you. Welcome to the North Town Christopher Columbus celebration. I'm sorry I cannot be there, but I'm so happy that so many people can come and celebrate and have a nice luncheon afterwards. So I want to thank everybody and may God bless the people who attend this and God bless America. Thank you everyone for coming here today to celebrate a wonderful, wonderful discovery of America. God bless America and everybody that's participating, and everybody that's here, and everybody that wants to be here, and can't be here, like myself. I can't be there. I only wish the day will come when I can walk around that monument again. But I'm in the hands of God now, and hope everybody will enjoy this day. Thank you, and God bless America. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I like you to see what the Columbus Monument's all about, how it started, and we were so happy to make a contribution to North Sound. Thank you, Hank. I actually have a unique vantage point of standing up here and looking out at all of you, and I must say, the smiles on your faces as you heard Hank's voice I'm sure that means a lot to his family uh, and to him as well. I'll relay that to him when I when I talk to him next because everyone had a big smile on their face as soon as they heard Hank's voice. And that really says a lot to what he has done for this monument and this day. Uh, and hopefully we can continue that moving forward. Now, uh, without further ado, today's keynote speaker will be Lou Alba, who is co-owner of Lou's Steak Shop here in Norristown, and he's going to uh, give today's address. You didn't put no pressure on me, did you? <laughs> well, good morning, everybody, and happy Columbus Day. My name is Lou Albert, 
And thank you to Columbus Mining the Committee for the honor of speaking today. So if you like my speech, thank you in advance. And if you didn't like it, you can thank Russell Bono and Al DiGennaro, because they talked me into it. Now first, our family from Lewis would like to recognize Hank Cisco and his contribution to this Columbus Day celebration. Hank is, and is, is the true ambassador of Norristown, and we wish him well. But before I say any more, I did not bring enough Zeps to feed everybody. <laughs> so for those who don't know me, I am the co-owner of Lou's Steak Shop along with my brother Charlie. He's hiding back here, the big guy. We've been a Norristown institution since 1941, serving breakfast and lunch, steaks and Zeps on East Main Street in the once predominantly Italian East End. Our business has changed over the years, but we're challenged daily to keep our dream alive. My journey, like Columbus, began in 1965. Norristown during that time was the greatest place in the world to live, and to work, and to worship. There was no place like it, and the East End was the hub. I was 10 years old. My father owned Alba's Meat Market, and a half a block away, my grandfather owned Lou's. So my family owned the butcher shop on Main Street. Not to be confused with the Alba's on Penn Street. They owned the poultry store. We were the meat men, they were the chicken men. <laughs> so in that half square mile around Holy Saver Church, you could get anything you want. There was four butcher shops, three bakeries, four laundromats and dry cleaners, two beverage distributors, a shoemaker shop, an ornamental ironworks, two delicatessens, three funeral homes, two pool halls, three bars and tap rooms, and four social clubs, a rug factory, a produce distributor, two lemonade stands, a vacuum cleaner store, a hat store, a movie theater, flower shop, a hardware store, two barber shops, two beauty shops, two gas stations, two bocce courts, and one bowling alley. All owned by Italians or Italian organizations. Everyone lived in between or above these businesses. They all worked together. They all helped each other. They were all different, yet all the same. We all went to Holy Savior School, myself, my two brothers, and six sisters. To go to Holy Savior, at least one of your parents had to be Italian. It was 1965, and those were the rules. I'm 64, and some of my most cherished friendships to this day are with my classmates from Holy Savior. The school was run by the IHM nuns, the blue nuns. The St. Joe nuns were the black nuns, the Franciscan nuns were the brown nuns. We found this out when we went to Bishop Kendrick. There were, all, there were other nuns. So, but this, so most of us kids were good. Some of the sisters were great and few of them were disciplinarians. But most of us kids that were good were only good because we never got caught. <laughs> there was a few unlucky ones that always got caught. And there was one in particular, and we're gonna call him Dave. <laughs> but when we had our class pictures taken, the nun said, you better take his twice. One like this, and one like this. <laughs> but we became better men and women, better Americans, and still proud Italians. My namesake, Grandpa Lou Bobby, <coughs> excuse me, was nicknamed the Baron. Everybody, in a, at, a, at least Italian, had a nickname. But my time here is limited. So if you want to earn nicknames, you got to see Charlie Russo. Where's he at? Charlie Russo knows 300 nicknames, and he'll tell you where everybody lives. <laughs> now, when Grandpa opened his store, it was originally called Nick and Lou's. And for years, he eventually bought out Nick, and it became and it's been Lou's ever since. Lou's was the Wawa, the 7-Eleven, the Dairy Queen, and McDonald's, all in one, before people even knew what fast food was and convenience places where it weren't even thought of. Like Norristown's motto, Fairbed Opus, Lou's was always busy, seven days a week, 20 hours a day. But before my big chance to work behind the counter, me, Charlie, and our cousin Anthony had the good job. Every Saturday, we got to peel four to five bags of onions. Take all the empty soda bottles downstairs and bring the full ones up. There was no plastic, no recycled throwaways, these were glass bottles and wooden crates. And when we finished, we got paid 50 cents a bag. But we got to eat sandwiches and all the soda you want. Because we were laborers too. So, laborers were the mainstay at Lou's. Those laborers came from 
Sciacca in Sicily, Mundella in Sicily, and Ascoli Piceno in northeastern Italy. They worked in the factories and mills, Allenwood Steel, Nicolette, Cantaluna, Le Grip's Rug Factory, <coughs> Brazil's Bakery. They were the stonemasons, bricklayers, painters, carpenters, barbers, butchers, and bakers. This group were all the Italians that I knew. I didn't know any other ones. Everyone else were called Midians <laughs> or the Americans, the non-Italians. And we cannot forget to recognize the contributions of our mothers. They did everything. <clears throat> no sacrifice was too great. Our mom spent her whole life at lose, from 13 years old to 82. During those years, she graduated high school, went two years to college. She married our dad, Jojo, had nine children, and when she wasn't pregnant, she worked at the store. <laughs> we grew up thinking, doesn't everybody have a crib and a bassinet in their living room? She was president of the Holy Savior Mother's Club. She coached basketball, softball, volleyball, cooked, cleaned, iron, washed, diapers, no huggies. Never, she never left her house without making the beds. And all this, she never drove a car. If she needed a ride, she said, I'll get a hop. She would always give to strangers, mostly those lost souls who would find their way to lose with no, with no money or no family. Was she perfect? Of course. <laughs> but she always smoked. So we all tried to get her to quit at one time or another. And uh, she said, her answer was, I don't do anything else bad. <laughs> So you can't argue with that, but she never turned down a shot of whiskey, and the Crown Royal was her favorite. <laughs> All of us can brag about our moms. Uh, <laughs> they were, and are still are, the center of our Italian families. I have met and still meet people every day at Luce. First time you're a customer, second time you're a friend. We've had close to four generations of families come to our store. So if I see you and recognize you, but forget your name, I call you Cuz. Once you become a lose regular, you get a nickname. It's a badge of honor for some and a curse for others. They just ask my first customers to come in every morning at 5.30. They all got nicknames. And once you get in, you're in. After graduating Bishop Kenrick in 1973, I worked full time at Lose. I had the morning shift, me, my Aunt Mary, her nickname was Mary Reds, and Ben Denolte, his nickname was Mushy. We would get there 4.30 and set up for opening. Well, after half an hour, Aunt Mary would disappear. And her son looked next door, so she would go check on him and see if he needed anything, and clean up or cook something, or whatever. So one time, she came over and I said, Hey, Mary, where'd you go? And she said, Don't worry, they still go good, son. <laughs> now, I don't know what that meant. Well, on occasion, she would argue with Grandpa and Sicilian, and I would hear her use that name. So what I found in time was that nickname meant squash head or pumpkin head. <laughs> Literally empty head. But it didn't matter. I had a nickname, so I was in. <laughs> but in closing, those Italians <coughs> who made up my world were the Shockies, the Mondays, and the Mark. They all had wonderful gardens. They were excellent cooks, hardworking laborers, and the most loyal friends and customers you could want. Their contributions to our community and our church and our world continue to this day. They all came here with the same dream, a better life for their families and an opportunity, not a handout. Although we've kept our Italian heritage and traditions, most Italian immigrants were proud to be called Italian-Americans. They filled the need for laborers to build the United States at the turn of the century. They defended our country in every war. They became recognized doctors, statesmen, financiers, CEOs, lawyers, judges, military and law enforcement men and women. The list of accomplishments is endless. So my last thing I will leave you with is a song by Louis Freeman. It's called Enjoy Yourself, It's Later Than You Think. So, buona sera, buona fortuna, e Dio benedicta in America. Goodbye, good luck, and God bless America.
Thank you, Lou. Uh, now I would ask, I'm going to ask Al, Al Zone, who's CEO and ex Executive Director of the Elmwood Park Zoo, to come forward, and he's going to give you an update on the Monument Educational Edition. Hello, good morning. Thank you again, uh, everybody. I, I've stood up here a few years now and, and, and thanked everybody, but I also uh, have always expressed how meaningful it is for me to be able to stand up here, uh, being born and raised in Narstown, hearing all the great things. I, I heard an awesome story by Lou prior to him getting to talk to you guys about uh, my grandfather and, and uh, a pig roast that they used to do every year. My grandfather was one of the founders of the Holy Savior Club, and it was, it's, it's awesome for me to be able to stand up here and reconnect with everybody. <laughs> I can tell you in my seventh year at Elmwood Park Zoo, what's been awesome and exciting for me is the growth that we've been able to show. When I took over at the zoo, it was something that a lot looked at as a challenge. How could it be successful? The zoo was having a lot of trouble. At that time, we had about 114,000 visitors. It was never a challenge that I wasn't willing to face, nor was it something that I actually thought about. It was something that each and every day that I got to wake up, I was excited about trying to make a difference for this great town. This past season, we had over 720,000 visitors into the zoo, which is an exciting leap, taking our revenue from 1.2 million to over $11 million a year in revenue. It's because of great teams like uh, the Elmwood Park Zoo team that's in the back, but even more importantly, great partners and supporters to allow that group, the zoo, excuse me, to continue to grow. Um, I'm proud to, and excited to announce that because of J.P. Mascara and Sons, uh, we'll be opening a new exhibit ra rather soon. We're bringing tigers, which have never been to the zoo before, uh, so we're excited about that. But it's because of great individuals that not only are supporting the zoo, supported things like this monument and this town to continue to move it forward and take it to the next level. We will always be strong supporters of this town, of this monument, and everything it takes to make it up. This past year, we added some educational components, the monitor out front, fixing some stuff inside, these awesome videos which you have to check out by Hank, where all you have to do is hover over it with your camera, and it'll take you right to the video on YouTube. It's real simple, I promise. If not, our team can help you get there. But it's about telling the story. It's about telling all the great stories about how people came to Narstown, how they migrated to Narstown to continue to make this town grow. I'm honored again to be a part of it. I'm honored of all the support and to see this room fill. We had to add some more chairs to the back. There's about, I think, 60 more chairs than there were last year here, which is exciting. We'll fill this whole thing and maybe even the park as we move forward. So thank you so much. Oh, I also have passes to the zoo. So please make sure you grab a pass to the zoo for after. Thank you. Um, now I would ask. Uh, Cesare Gambone, treasurer of uh, the Regional Association of Campania in Pennsylvania, to come forward and do the uh, replant ceremony. Oh, there you are. Hello, everyone. My name is Cesar Gambone, and I'm the treasurer for the Regional Association of Campania and PA. I want to tell you a little bit about our organization, and if you're interested in joining us, please see me or any board member after the event today. Uh, I will be at the luncheon hosted by J.P. Mascaro and Sons, so please feel free to come by and talk to me about our organization. Our association seeks to enhance, promote, educate, and augment the diffusion of Italian culture and has been doing so for almost 20 years. We were founded in Montgomery County in 2000 and have continued our mission in collaboration with the culture and tourism of the Campania region. Each year, our organization hosts numerous events such as trips to Italy, benefit receptions, general assemblies, bingo, Italian night, and our annual Christmas party. We also seek to assist aspiring students of Italian descent by offering an annual scholarship dedicated to our founder, my father, Romino Gambone. One of our greatest achievements was spearheading the project to build the monument to the immigrants of the Campania region in Montella, Italy. 
This monument still resides today at the Holy Savior Church in Montilla. This monument, <coughs> excuse me, and serves as a continual reminder of the difficulties immigrants face when moving to a new country. All the things they leave behind, but more importantly, all the things that they bring with them. We are not an exclusive club, and you don't have to be Italian to join. In fact, many of our members are people looking to reconnect with their heritage or just want to get exposure to the Italian culture. So if this sounds interesting to you, and you would like to join a group of caring individuals who want to show you what it means to be Italian, please check out our Facebook page or see me or any of the board members here, and we can tell you how to join. Thank you for your time, and now we're going to lay the wreath. I'd like to call for my mother and the Gambo. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to recognize some people who are with us here today. Uh, Joe Gale, County Commissioner's here. Uh, Fred Connor, who's the uh, Chairman of the Board of Supervisors in Whitman Township, is with us as well. Peter McFarland from the Board of Supervisors in Lower Providence. We have uh, Joanne Ocheski, the uh, jury commissioner, here with us. We have uh, Carol Griffin, who is president of the Regional Association. We have Cesar Gambone, who's president of the Holy Savior Club. And then we have um, Larry Eckert, who's the president of the Patriotic Order of the Sons of America, as well as up several other members of his organization. Here. One of those members happens to be Oscar Vance, <laughs> who we all know has had many, many positions over the years. <laughs> Um, and if I missed anyone, I, I apologize. Um, now I'd like to ask Monsignor Sandra Monner to come forward for the benediction. <clears throat> Almighty God, we thank you for, once again, allowing us to show this wonderful spirit of patriotism and unity, which has long been a part of the role of Christopher Columbus in the history of our country. Grant that by our words and example, we may do our part to preserve that spirit in our own community and thereby assist our beloved United States in doing so long into the future. Bless us and all those who have participated in and worked so hard to bring about this wonderful Christopher Columbus celebration today. Amen. Amen. Before we retire the colors, um, I would like to invite everyone here today back to the luncheon that has become customary at J.P. Mascara and Corporate Headquarters. If anyone needs directions, I'm sure we'll have some folks that can direct you how to get there afterwards. And then again, before we retire the colors, we'll have a few final words from Hank. All right, now you can all go to Pat Mascara's office. They're going to have a party. I want every the manja, manja, manja. You got everything here. Oh my God, the food is so good. Yeah, I think it's from uh, Collinsville Bakery, so God bless everybody. We'll now retire the colors, and then we'll have a closing song before we end.
Please remain standing and we'll have Bianca lead us uh, and God bless America. Seeing everybody next year. God bless everyone. God bless everyone.